Today on Project Plus Delta, we're going to build a base for this 3D printer that's going to hold a camera for remote monitoring. Hi, Brian Palmer here from the IdeaWorks Makerspace and the Multimedia Production Center here at Washington College. And I'm just wrapping up a project I thought I'd share. We've got three PrinterBot uh, Metal Plus 3D printers in the lab that we, um, we're, we're just setting up now. We're just getting ready to launch the Makerspace to the campus. And one of the things that um, concerned me when we were you know, looking at how it was going to be on the desktop is the idea that um, the build plate extends pretty far in and out beyond the footprint of the actual um, the 3D printer itself. So if somebody is going to be reaching back to turn on the power supply or plug in a cable or something and they might shift it a little bit, if it moves too close to the wall, then in the process of sliding all the way back, it'll potentially hit the wall and it could stall the motor or uh, at the very least it could mess up a 3D print if it's in process. Same kind of a thing where if uh, somebody um, would maybe walk up and you know, put down a purse or a water bottle uh, in front of the 3D printer and they think that they're you know, far enough away and then the next thing you know when it goes to home, the, uh, the 3D printer, it might slide the tray out and either knock the water bottle on the floor or at the very least, again, it could stall the motor out and, and maybe cause some damage. So um, this, uh, this tray kind of helps to organize it in the space and also to sort of let people know this is what this is and hey, keep this area clear because the build tray can come all the way out to the extent of this uh, wood platform here. Um, so another thing that we wanted to do and we're getting ready to roll out is the ability for uh, users in the lab to, to monitor their 3D printing uh, from other places on campus with their, uh, their cell phones. Originally, we were thinking of having it be sort of above uh, the, the print area, sort of square uh, in front of it and looking down because in doing some time-lapse videos and, and just experimenting a little bit, that seemed to be a good angle to do it. But then we realized that um, not only is it in your way when you're trying to sort of, you know, pry things free from the build plate and just work in general here. Um, but it also, um, if something was to slide forward and was a tall build, it could you know, actually hit the camera. So we started experimenting with some small boxes, cardboard boxes and things like that. And we found that you know, if you think about the width of the whole uh, 3D printer with a power supply next to it, you've got the build plate extending out in front of the 3D printer, but you've got sort of this little bit of a safe area in front of the power supply. So we, um, we sort of, um, you know, opted to go for this as the location for it. And this way it'll be screwed down and it'll give you this nice kind of fixed location. So this was designed in Illustrator. We just kind of measured this up, uh, you know, roughly and designed this out here. The box was made uh, using makercase.com's, you know, free online utility to make these, uh, these cuts to, to create a box. And then my colleague, Eric Broussard, uh, had the idea to rather than uh, attach the box onto this sort of deck here, to actually cut out the space where the bottom plate would be otherwise and fit it right in. So you can see that this is designed in a way now that this is fit right into the bottom plate. So that gets glued right in and it's all one sort of nice flush piece now. So it goes together nicely. So this is a prototype that we built originally using uh, just cheap floor underlay, just a kind of, you know, inexpensive way to rough together. And we made some uh, adjustments and stuff, you know, uh, enlarged a couple of little things and, and then um, we have uh, the final pieces in a little bit higher quality uh, uh, plywood. But one of the things that I could share uh, that I learned in the process of doing this um, that um, I've done with other projects is to use your scraps um, of wood when you're sanding the, the, um, the sort of caramelized wood away, that sort of smoky look on the wood away uh, when you use the laser cutter. So instead of just taking a piece out after you've cut it and then using the sander and you know sanding it to remove that surface, uh, you know the surface smoky kind of look to it, um, use the, the the scraps. And the reason that's good to do is because you, you don't have the uh, accidental where you dig into the edges a little bit and uh, you know kind of cut through the veneer and show the the thin edge of the plywood uh, underneath of it. So in this case, this is this is one where I did it the way that I'm sort of recommending. And in this prototype, I was just kind of rushing it just for the, the form of it. And I wasn't really too worried about the, the look of it as much. And you can see where I didn't use this little tray here around this, uh, this piece. And as a result, uh, the, the sander did actually kind of go through this veneer. It goes through pretty quick. This cheap floor underlay has a very, very thin veneer. So the higher quality plywood that we used, it's a sort of a one of these two foot by four foot project boards you can get from Home Depot um, with a birch veneer uh, that has a little bit thicker veneer. But regardless, um, it's just, you know, it's best if you use that little frame because it 
the last thing you want to do is do all the etching, all the cutting, and you're ready to sort of, you know, do the final steps before you uh, put some kind of a finish on it, and then you end up blowing through the veneer with the sander. If you want to make your own 3D printer base for the PrinterBot Metal Plus 3D printers, you can download the, uh, the Illustrator file that I've used to create this from the description below the video here, and it's going to be able to give you the layout. Uh, it's got a, a layer for all the etching, a layer for all the cutting. You can use it as is to create one just like this for your 3D printer.